Alright everybody, hello and welcome as always, I am Sean and this is In The Mixer, episode 66, Route 66, all those other crappy songs relating to this number, and interestingly, more so for me than you guys, we're actually going to cross over this week and this will be the longest running series I've ever done on YouTube, which is going to be a fantastic personal milestone for me, so very much looking forward to it. If you haven't gone back and watched last week's episodes, go and check them out, we've had a fantastic start to the league one season, we're up challenging for the title at the moment, we've also been on a fantastic run for the FA Cup, and we're probably going to have the biggest game of the series to date, an FA Cup fourth round tie against Premier League Chelsea, the first time we've come up against Premier League opposition in this series. Because of that, we haven't actually played any games off screen, so there isn't a tremendous amount of recap. So we might as well jump straight into the game, have a look at the quick recap of the results from last episode, and then jump into the match against Chelsea, where we look to move back to the top of the table. So as you guys can currently see, we are on 25 games played, 17 wins, five draws, three defeats in that time. One point behind Sunderland, but a game in hand on them. We could potentially move back up to top spot, uh, two points clear, at the end of this episode. If you didn't watch everything from Friday, we played Blackburn in the FA Cup last time out. A 3-3 draw despite going 2-0 down in the first half. We did tremendously well to get back into it, go 3-2 ahead. They did pull one back late, but it was a very, very good goal. And then on penalties in the return leg at home, managed to get through 3-2 on penalties. They had one that they missed, the goal entirely. Two saves in that time from Jack Donkin, who had a fantastic game, and it does get us through to the fourth round and potentially, I think, the biggest tie that we've had so far. We're going to play it at home. We're going to break all of our attendance records. We're going to break all of our gate receipt records. There'll be a whole bunch of different history made in this tie regardless of what the result is. But first, we need to get ourselves beyond Cheltenham, who are currently 22nd in the division. I've just noticed their stadium is called the Johnny Rocks Stadium, which is absolutely outstanding. I don't know what Johnny Rocks is. If you know, put it in the comment section below. I assume it's a brand name or something. But those are the sort of sponsorship deals we need to get. We're still the FC Isle of Man Stadium randomly, and why can't we be the Johnny Rock Stadium? As we look here at the squad, we've got a couple of players who are not struggling for fitness so much, but, oh, well, actually, Sean Waderman is. I take that back, so we're probably going to rotate him out of the squad. But I've also got a couple of players that I'm concerned are coming up on yellow card bans. You can see here, Smith is actually one yellow card away from suspension. It would be a shame if he actually missed the game against Chelsea due to yellow card suspension. So Coates will come in as well. We might as well move Robertson back to be a ball-winning midfielder on defend. And then what I'm thinking as well, record was excellent in the last episode and has been in great form in the last five games. I'm going to drop him for Davies just to give him a bit more focus on the FA Cup tie. You can see Davies has struggled over the last few weeks and randomly, I brought it up in the last episode, but he has moved from being a three-star player to a two-star player, which is mind-boggling to me. He's still got 14 goals in 20 appearances. It's not one I expected to happen, but we'll give him a start. We'll see how he performs and hopefully... Uh, get a few decent performances out of him in the league season as the game continues. Otherwise, relatively strong lineup. We should have enough about us. And actually, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking we're going to go attacking from the off and really take it to them a little bit. They are one of the worst sides in the division. We should have enough to get beyond them if we play to our ability. But as we know, when you load up the game, anything can happen. You can be on a great run of form. You can have massive results. And then as soon as you take a day away from the match, uh, load it back up again. It goes out the window and quite often you'll see like teams towards the bottom of the division randomly beating teams towards the top. So no room for complacency. We're going to be attacking. We're going to try and find the back of the net as quickly as possible and see how we go. I've forgotten to do a preview for them. Who really cares? Great opportunity to show everybody that they've been right to back you up. I'm also going to assertively tell the defense I have faith in you guys. If we get a good defensive performance going and keep a clean sheet, I back us as a team to score against most opposition. But it's really if we kind of leave ourselves open to the counter attack, if the ball's over the top, crossfield switches, all that sort of stuff. If we can get that under control, I think we'll be in a good position. We're through half an hour. They haven't had a shot yet, but we're going to use that Get Creative shout. We haven't had any highlights for either side just yet. I can't remember the last uh, game we actually played where neither side had a highlight in the first half of football. And we are rapidly getting towards first time injury time. One minute to be added on, and we're through that now. So no highlights in the first half, which hopefully isn't... Uh, a poor omen for the rest of the episode. Two shots, none on the target, 45% possession for Cheltenham. They haven't really threatened us. We've had six shots, five on target, 55% of the ball. Dressing room, we're going to say passionately, this is a great opportunity to show everyone their right to back you up. It's worked again. I'm actually going to assertively tell everyone, I'm looking for you to make the difference. I'm looking for you to make the difference. I'm looking for you to make the difference. I think the bonus that we've also got is we can bring on Waderman and record as a bit of quality off the bench to potentially push for an equaliser or push for a winner in the last 30 minutes here. But really, more than anything, I just want to highlight. As we look around the grounds, a draw would be enough for us to go back top of the division, but I'd love a win. It would help us uh, build out a points differential with Sunderland in case we do drop points later in the season. Ball in here to Davies, who does turn the man. He's gotten inside him now and gets the strike away. First highlight of the game, shot on target from Davies. Phillips quite comfortably holds. Is that the end of the highlight? Long ball forward here. Right should bring it down unchallenged. Back to Coates, now into the Wolf. 
Robertson sends a ball into the corner to nobody in particular, but Knowles has done quite well to recover possession. We give it back though. Dua to Peters. Ogan Seri skips past one challenge, gets to the top of the box, strikes from distance, thankfully off target. The first real striking angle we've seen from Cheltenham. Deep free kick for them here though. Battersby with the ball into May in midfield. Now Pike, Ogan Seri. Skips past one challenge again. The second highlight in the row, he's done that. And thankfully, the strike from the wide area straight at the keeper. We're going to look at our subs now. We're through an hour. So, Ricky Dean struggling a little bit. Preston Kelly struggling a little bit. I think we're just going to focus more on the two first team players that we want to bring on. I'm going to take off Grant Davies for Dwayne Record. I'm going to bring on Sean Waderman for Carl Robertson. And we'll push Waderman back to being a Messiah on attack. Just got a little bit attacking more through the player roles than anything else. I'm not super worried about Ricky Dean. Rafinha is also struggled. We'll bring on John Mashin as well because he can kind of wrap his foot around the ball when we need him to. Passionately, I'm going to say, I have faith in you. Get out there and make a difference. They've all responded positively. And let's also use our Get Creative shout here. Old Faithful, after an hour, Get Creative, it usually creates something for us. And while we're on top statistically, we haven't had that many highlights and we're getting towards the last 10 minutes now. Is this going to be one of those scenarios where we reload the game and struggle to get beyond lower league opposition? I've used a demand more shout for the last 10 minutes. They've got a deep free kick here and they've found a go-ahead goal. Charlie Raglan from the set piece. Smith has wrapped his foot around that one from about 45 yards out and the keeper couldn't really do too much about it. We're going to check out the marking here. There's players around him, just nobody challenges for the ball. Raglan's the only one that goes up for the header and it's a decent header to be fair to him, back and low and hard across the goalkeeper. It's a highlight here. All back through Donkin now. Can we try and chase an equaliser in the last few minutes? Coates out to the right-hand side. Right, the fullback can play forward. Instead, he goes back into midfield. Peters has smashed the ball in behind for Ogunseri, who's goal side for the third time this half, and he's found the finish. Second goal of the season for him. What is going on? This is one of the biggest frustrations that I have with Football Manager. The biggest one by far is players shooting from wide angles when they could cut it back or put a cross in. But consistently... And I feel a little bit vindicated because in the last episode, I recorded two very late night episodes because I didn't want to stop because we were in fantastic form. We have gone away after, I think, being 10 games undefeated in the league itself. We walk away for a couple of days. We reload the game. And all of a sudden, the 22nd team in the division is beating us 2-0 on their home ground. I don't think they've won a game in the last 10 or something crazy like that. Record's gotten in behind here. Can he find the finish? It's a good save from Phillips in the goal. We're going to have a late corner here as we go into injury time. Ricky Dean's going to take. Can he wrap his foot around it? Let's pull one back, boys, just for a bit of character. Mashin loses out to Pike, and the highlight comes to an end. We're through the three minutes now. We're going to lose. We have lost to the second worst team in the division. They had eight shots, five on target, 48% possession. 11 shots, eight on target, 52% for us. Let's be aggressive. That was absolutely shit. Oh, God, this game. I love this game. I love it a tremendous amount, but it frustrates the living shit out of me sometimes. I guess the one thing that we can focus on is a positive. It looks like Sunderland drew their game so that's kind of a positive for us as well and it was a late equalizer actually the positive is that we do still have a game in hand we can still go one point clear at the top of the table and we do have a positive goal difference but my god just to randomly throw away three points for no reason Cheltenham profit for wasteful Isle of man uh, charlie raglan gets the man of the match award a 7.8 match rating for his goal and man fc Isle of man lose after five games undefeated like some of the teams that we've beaten in that run are much much better than Cheltenham, but whatever we're going to put it aside we're going to start focusing on our game against Chelsea. I think first things first, I'm going to put in the lineup that I want to go for, which will see record come back in for Davies. It'll see Waderman come back in as the Messiah on attack. And we're just going to go positive actually for that game because I think that makes the most sense for the team in the squad. We can only put five on the bench, so we've got to rotate a little bit for that as well. Smith will come back into the lineup at centre back. Yeah, I think those are the five subs I'm going to go to. It does mean that McCluskey, Coates, Williams... Nelson, a couple of those guys miss out on actually being involved in the fixture. But otherwise, I think we're relatively good conditioning. Isn't great, but we've got a full week before the next game. Uh, so I think we don't need to utilize the rest day. Uh, Magic Editing, we're going to jump forward to the game against Chelsea now and have a look at their lineup and a bit of their squad. All right, just like that, we are a few days ahead or a full week ahead, I should say. There's been a couple of different changes in the back end. We've signed Tyrone Taylor to a new contract, mainly because Derby were offering, I think, his release fee. We've now expanded that to £2 million, which is crazy. He signed for a couple more seasons. He's up to £2,000 a week. It does make him joint one of our highest earners, but I thought it'd be better to keep him around. He is our captain. He has done quite well for us over the last few seasons. And given that potential ability, if we go up to a championship, he's one of the players that I think could potentially be okay at that level and continue to get us through. So that one's a little bit interesting. I've also made a change. I've dropped Preston Kelly. I just don't think he's played that well. And when I look at Sam Morris and his progression over the course of this season, he's done fantastically well of everything I've asked him to do. His stats are all heading in the right direction. 
three star current ability, five star potential. It's exactly the same as Preston Kelly. So I'm going to give him an opportunity and see how he gets on in this match. They have a very, 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 very strong lineup. Uh, they haven't rotated really at all. Uh, they've got Fioko Tomori over at right back. We know he's an excellent player, still playing for Chelsea's real life side at the moment. 63 million pound in value, 266 appearances for Chelsea uh, since joining as a junior. He's an absolute beast. They're playing his an elite centre back. They're playing him at right back today, which might just be due to a little bit of rotation. They picked up Jude Bellingham, who everyone of course knows is one of the highest prospects four English players in FM this year. They picked him up via Newcastle, um, who take, took him from Birmingham after a few seasons there. Uh, he's at 61 million pound value. Looks to be an absolutely fantastic prospect. Very, very good player. Still only 24 years of age in the game universe as well. We've got Danny Olmo. Again, one of the best wonder kids available at the start of the game. Ex-Barcelona junior. He's at Dinamo. He's gone through Man United and now at Chelsea, absolutely tearing the division apart. He's going to be a big struggle. And we already looked at him kind of in the build-up. Goncalo Goncalves looks to be an absolute machine up top. So they've definitely gone a full-strength lineup. They haven't given us any break or respite or anything like that. And really, we're just going to enjoy this for what it is, which is probably going to be a 5-0 thumping. But we're going to enjoy the day as much as possible. And hopefully, this is a bit of a marker against Chelsea of where we want FC Isle of Man to eventually get to rather than a reality on where we are today. Passionately, I'm going to say... We've got nothing to lose. Let's show, we know how good we are. Let's show everyone. And let's passionately also tell the defense, I have faith in you to make a difference. And everyone has responded positively, which is great to see. Uh, both teams come into this one in good form. How do you rate your chances ahead of kickoff? They're a very good team. We're going to roll us the challenge of keeping a good form going or putting a dent in their aspirations. Some people have labeled your team's potential giant killers. We're going to give it our best shot. And Sam Maris's lack of game fitness, he's good to go. He's all fine. And we've left Preston Kelly on the bench if it doesn't work. Let's just see how we go. Let's just enjoy the fixture. We're on our positive mentality. We're not panicking too far. Danny Olmo's going to have a free kick here early doors. Lewis Wright's picked up an early yellow card. Favors a right footer. It's a good effort just past the near post. And I don't think if it had been on target, Donkin would have got across to it on time. Early doors, we'll have to keep an eye on now. Waderman's picked up a yellow card as well. They've got a player picking up a yellow card. We don't want to overcommit. Go down to 10 men. That would be a death sentence. We're through 30 minutes now and haven't been many highlights. Just that one free kick. But statistically speaking, we're actually doing okay. Taylor's also picked up a yellow card, which is a concern. Dwayne Record with a free kick from distance, and Erlen Joe in the Chelsea goal pushes it over. I think he maybe could have caught it, but I'll take it. Dean to take the corner now. We don't want to overcommit. The counter-attack threat from the corner is very real. Tomori wins it back, and the highlight comes to an end. Throw in, left-hand side, taken by Morris. Sends Record into the corner. Squares it up towards Wolf, but it's cut out. Thankfully, Taylor recovers possession. Puts it back into a poor area. The Wolf recovers possession. Ball over the top for a record. And he maybe could have got that one on target. But instead he blazes over. It's good to see that we're actually getting like highlights and consistent possession in this particular match. Two minutes to be added on at the end of first time, uh, first time, first half. And we're through that time now. Six shots, three on target, 43% possession. Seven shots, two on target, 57% of the ball. I am just going to assertively tell everyone, I'm happy with the performance so far. Keep it up. There's no reason to panic. No reason to get upset. We're doing quite well dealing with them so far. And even if we do end up losing in the second half 5-0, I'm not going to panic about it. We're just going to enjoy the match for what it is. They've taken off Goncalves and brought on Dario Morris, a centre-back, which is an interesting change. Bellingham's won the ball back in midfield and someone's got to come to him. Make him commit, boys. Otherwise, he's gone past you and thankfully, he makes the wrong decision, drives from distance and puts it well past the far post. All right, we're through now now and still somehow staying in this game. We're just going to go... Oh, what is the concern here? Match ratings or yellow cards? I'm thinking potentially match ratings is the bigger issue. So let's take off Ricky Dean. We don't have a right winger on. Let's just make like flux subs. Uh, Rafinha struggled a little bit against his old club. We're going to bring on John Mashin for him. And Grant Davies will come on for Dwayne Record, who struggled a little bit as well. Let's just passionately say, I have faith in you guys make a difference. We'll keep the other sub up our sleeve in case we do go down to 10 men. And let's use our get creative shout. We've been mainly demanding more and focusing. They've got a corner here. Morris with the header just over the crossbar. It was a wicked ball in there from Danny Olmo. Olmo squares it back up to Bellingham. Thankfully, the header straight at Donkin, who does well to hold. Is that the end of the highlight? They've kept three men forward, and oh my god, we haven't, have we? Dario Mora, we're... Oh, this game. It's going to be one of those days. I can already feel it. This game is going to eventually kill me. We've got the ball here. We've got wide players, and for whatever reason, Morris and whoever else just stand directly in front of him, and Duncan decides he's going to kick it directly into the man 10 yards away. And despite all of our good play, despite keeping the ball, despite all the great things that we've done in this match, that's how we actually concede to Premier League Chelsea. All right, we've got 10 minutes remaining. They've got a free kick. I'll let this play out before we use the shout. Good ball in, and they've actually scored a decent goal. Dario Morris has come off the bench and got a double. Uh, we're going to demand more for the last 10 minutes. 
I feel a little bit better now knowing they actually scored a decent goal. If we had a lost 1-0 to that fucking goalkeeper glitch, I would have been absolutely livid. Good header across from Morris and Duncan can't really do anything about it. Good header to be fair. They had three guys standing there. That definitely a set piece routine off the training park for them. Four minutes to be added on here. I think we're going to get through most of that time. There is a late throw in here for Chelsea on the left-hand side. Charles picks up the ball, plays it in midfield. Back to Elliott. Now to Goff. I think they've rotated a little bit now. They've taken off a couple of their better players in midfield. Danny Olmo looks like he's moved to a central role. John Mashin's recovered the ball in a good position. Looks to send Davies down into the channel. Tamori recovers, plays it back to Morris, the goal scorer. Now Kelly, ball forward to Olmo. Good possession here from Chelsea. You can see their quality now. Charles bursts forward, squares it up towards Bellingham. He manages to get it back in possession, and he's found the finish. A good goal from Jude Bellingham. Just clips the inside of the post. And we did quite well for an hour, but I think uh, as soon as that goal went in, it was really we were going to keep a clean sheet or we were going to lose. Charles does quite well. Good little turn in there. He looks to be a decent player. And Bellingham does score. Oh, actually, it was a tackle initially, and then Bellingham's first one to the rebound. Couldn't be more accurate than that, but just inside the base of the post and crosses the line for the third goal of the game. Got a late throw in here and down our end. Waiterman with possession. Finds Mashing. Can we get a consolation goal? Just for a bit of character, boys. Played across to the Wolf. Now Waiterman. Wolf does quite well to keep possession under pressure. Mashing skips past a couple and plays it to the Wolf again. Sends it out right towards Dean. What sort of ball can you get in the box there, Ricky? Backstick run towards Waiterman. Masham with the strike eventually. He's got it back now in deep area. Finds Davies front post and oh, all he had to do was get that one on target and he's put it into the side netting. It's just not going to be our day. I've decided. This is, I think, the first episode we've had in a while where we've lost both games and I can't really be upset. Chelsea are a very, very good team. They're looking on track to beat the Premier, win the Premier Division. So we really kind of have to take everything with a grain of salt. Didn't disgrace ourselves. 12 shots, 5 on target, 46% possession. They had 20 shots, 10 on target, 54% of the ball. We're a long way from being at their level, but at least we are heading in the right direction. Passionately, we're going to say, despite the result, I'm pleased with your performance out there, and everyone is pissed off by it. So, obviously, this is just one of those episodes where I've absolutely crushed it, and I've nailed everything, and we haven't lost both games. It does mean the FA Cup run comes to an end. Rafinha suffers a defeat against his former club. Dario Morris, who they brought on at right back, gets a double, which is always an interesting one. I'm not going to worry about the post-match press conference. We get 7.45k. I want to jump forward just a little bit, just to have a look at all the gate receipt details if they come through. Here we go. Record attendance broken by FC Isle of Man. Confirm the attendance of 4,460 for the match against Chelsea in the FA Cup is a new record high for the club. The previous was 3,972 set by Coventry last season, it looks like. Uh, and a new gate receipts record, 200k for that game is going to be massive for us. Previous record was 160, which we set against Blackburn in the last episode. And post-match analysis, Waiterman had a good game. Wolf had a good game. It's good to see that those guys are doing well against high-level opposition. And Knowles actually played pretty well as the false nine as well. I'm not going to panic. We're not going to worry. We're not going to throw the toys out of the pram. We're just going to focus on getting back into decent form. And let's also, as far as training is concerned, give everyone a rest day before the game against Blackpool, where we look to bounce back against some decent opposition, get a good result, and continue our movement up the table. We can potentially go top of the division in the next episode. I think as far as our schedule goes, we're pretty much just focusing on the league now for the rest of the week. So we might come back in a couple of games and play the game here against Exeter, who are a playoff side, and the game against Sunderland, which will be massive for us. We did already do an episode against Sunderland. I know that. They beat us convincingly. We can see in the second half of the season if we have improved, if we can turn our form around, if we can get a decent result against them. And if we do, I think that's going to be a massive first step towards a League One title. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. It hasn't been the best episode in terms of results, so if you want to help commiserate with me, drop a like on this video. It pleases that YouTube algorithm. It gets us higher in search results. It gets more people in the community. It gets more views. We continue to grow what is a pretty fantastic fan base that I'm very, very proud of. You can also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to be kept up to date on all our future videos as they're released. We're pretty much Monday to Friday at the moment. There will be some gaps coming up in the next few weeks, but I'll let you know about those before they happen. Check out the links just over on the side there if you want to check out our Twitter our regular twit saves, all that sort of stuff. But more than anything, thank you so much for watching. I've been Sean and I'll see you guys again in the mixer.